The Granary District is, up until a couple years ago, has been a forgotten place of the Salt Lake Valley, even though it's just blocks from downtown. It's been identified by many as the warehouse district of Salt Lake. If there was a warehouse district of Salt Lake, it'd be this neighborhood. It grew up around the railroad, and as the railroad moved west, many of the businesses moved with it, leaving a lot of empty and vacant space here. Now they're creative pioneers and people who have been here forever making a living down here now, co-mingling, and it's made this a very unique, identifiable neighborhood. And what we want to do is highlight those assets and add value. Because all a neighborhood wants to be is a thriving version of what it already is. <laughs> We're here getting ready for a soft opening for Granary Row, which is a taking over the middle of our really wide streets, still having two lanes of traffic going each way, but taking over the middle. And here in Salt Lake, we have these insanely wide streets and huge blocks that are very, very underutilized. And so the idea is, you know, cars only need so much room. You know, parallel parking, 12-foot travel lane, 12-foot travel lane, parallel parking. So cars don't need that much room that they're given here. So how do we take over some of that space to achieve neighborhood goals? We have to stay inside those red lines. The fire department, they'll shut us down for that fire lane. So a thing for tenants, like you guys might have to do a little man, just if you see someone like, yeah, they gotta, they gotta get out of So Granary Row is a proof of concept. We have about 16 total shipping containers, 10 of which are rehabbed into retail space, uh, affordable retail space. So here it is, it's a little small, but uh... <laughs> we want to attract entrepreneurs and micro ventures to our neighborhood, make them successful, and then hopefully scoot them into the vacant space here, allow them to put down roots and grow. <laughs> Is this how the walls are going to be set up? Yeah. So this is a completed container? Well, yeah, there's going to be track lighting, two okay. kinds of track lighting. There's going to be a glass facade here, a really nice glass facade. Awesome. And a door that opens this way. Okay. Oh, okay. So we so have a nice like, window, window display here. Okay. And these will fully open. And then we'll close them at night and lock them okay. up. Okay. You know, Based on our estimations, we're charging two fifty dollars a month for this space. Just to cover utilities, maintenance, and uh, security patrol at night. So it really doesn't generate revenue. We want to create affordable space to get guys like this down here, make them successful, and hopefully they open up a storefront. These are vendors who have signed a lease for Granary Row. They have a clothing company. So is it Salt City Clothing? Salt City Clothing, yeah. Salt City Clothing. They just come in and yeah. tag the walls. Yes. Yeah. It's going to be so yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's your guys' brand. We want you guys to make it, you know, yours. These all in from from structure to finish is it's about fifty dollars a square foot. You know, stick residential is about eighty five ninety a square foot maybe. So yeah, brick and mortar retail space is probably at least the one twenty sticks and brick structure, just hard costs. Granary Row, but it's, you know, I guess a light, quick, and cheap way of improving a space. It's a temporary project that runs for six months. Six months is a threshold of a temporary use. It allowed us to get permits and it made it financially feasible by not having to put foundations in um, and tap down onto water and sewer. I was born in the suburbs, I'm a creature of the suburbs, but don't ever want to live there again. There's nothing wrong with the suburbs, they have their perks for sure, but I want to live in a more walkable, compact, urban environment and raise my family there. And so, the next logical step for me was to uh, use a more open source model through crowdsourcing, engaging the current tenants. 
and attracting future tenants by allowing them to really work together to figure out what they want to invest in and what they want their neighborhood to turn into. And we've been down here brainstorming what our ideal neighborhood is for the last two and a half years. We have a cafe for food trucks. We have a community garden and some model residential units. We also have shipping containers rehabbed into micro retail space. And hopefully with that, you can attract entrepreneurs down here, bring viability, vibrancy down here, and provide a place for the neighborhood to hang out and get to know each other more. And so, it runs for six months, and then we remove everything store it off-site, hopefully do it again next year. And it'll get better as it goes, and hopefully uh, at some point it becomes permanent or an iteration of this becomes permanent.